Hello guys. So I would like us to look at um, solution of second order differential equations of this particular form here, where A, B, C are constants and uh, we have f of x on this other side because the other, um, uh, the other examples we had as zero here. Now to find the general solution of this second order differential equation, we get two parts. The general solution is given by u plus v, where u is basically the complementary function and v is the particular integral. Now the complementary function is gotten by letting fx be equal to zero. So just solving it the way we were solving the first time. And the particular integral is gotten by using an assumed pi, which will be given from this particular table here. So you will come and, and, and get an, an assumed pi from the table, then use that value to replace in the main equation. So we use an assumed pi from the table, which contains undetermined coefficients and substitute its values in this particular equation. Then we will equate the relevant coefficients and find the constants involved. So this table right here is very important because it will help us know the assumed pi that we are going to use in order for us to get the particular solution. So note the values of this table. If it's a constant, then we, get, we, we use our assumed pi as k, if it's a polynomial, and so on. So those are the different values of the assumed pi's. So now let's take up an example. So you're being told to get the general solution of this second order differential equation. Now the general solution will be given uh, by u plus b, which is basically cf plus pi. Now to get the cf, let's start by getting the cf. We are going to equate this part to zero. So we'll have d2y dx squared, plus dy dx minus 2y is equal to zero. Then let this be d2 plus let this be d minus two is equal to zero. So we can replace the value of two with m so that we have our auxiliary equation as is equal to zero. This is our auxiliary equation, which we will solve using the quadratic formula to get our values of m. So solving this using the quadratic formula, we get that m is equal to minus one plus minus the square root of minus one squared minus four times one times minus two. We already looked at this in the previous video, how exactly to go about this, depending on the value of m that you're going to get. So, and this is two times one. So our M values, if we evaluate correctly, we'll find that M is equal to one and M is equal to minus two. These are two real and different roots. And from the previous video, we saw that if you are having two real and different roots, then your solution, so now it will be our complementary function, U is given by, so we say that, it will be given by a exponential one x plus b exponential minus two x, where these are the roots. So this will be our complementary function. Now to get the pi, we said we are considering the f of x side. So pi, first of all, note what your f of x, our f of x is for, which is a constant. Now let's come and get the assumed PI from the table for a constant. The assumed PI is, is K for a constant, as you can see. So we will take V is equal to K as our assumed, uh, V is equal to K as our assumed PI. This is our assumed PI. Now the equation that we had was the 2Y dx squared plus dy dx minus 2y is equal to 4. So what we are going to do is this assumed pi, we are going to differentiate it. We are, we are going to, we will call it our yp, basically meaning our assumed pi. So we're going to uh, let it be our yp, then we will replace its value here. Then to get dy dx, we will differentiate it. To get the 2y dx, we will differentiate it twice. So our yp, which is our assumed pi, let's call it our yp is k. 
our yp, it's our assumed pi is k. So what's our dy dx? Let me put the p there so that we know it's just the assumed one. If you differentiate a constant, you get zero. What's our d2y dx squared? Let's put the p there because it's assumed we'll get a zero again. So we're going to replace these values into the main equation. We're going to replace these values into our main equation here. Remember, we've just used k because our f of x is four. So replacing, this will be zero plus replacing. We've differentiated this. This is zero minus two. What's our yp? Our assumed pi, which is k is equal to four. So evaluating this, we'll find that k is equal to minus two. And initially we said that v is equal to what? K. So clearly our assumed PI is equal to us having the real value of K, which is minus two. Now what's our final answer? Our final answer is Y is equal to U plus V. And what's our U? Our U we got as that was the complementary function, A exponential X plus B exponential. So A exponential X plus B exponential minus two X plus V, which is minus two. And this is our solution. That's how we go about solving that question. Let's take up another example. So for example number two, this is our question right here. So I want us to just go ahead. Here we are going to find the particular solution. As you can see, we've been given the uh, uh, conditions, the initial conditions. So uh, we are going to find the solution and then replace the values that we find the uh, particular solution. So our general solution, let's first of all start with getting our general solution is U plus. V, where u is the complementary function. So how do we get the complementary function? To get the CF, we equate this part to zero. So we'll have um, 2 d2y dx squared plus 7 uh, dy dx plus 3y is equal to zero. We can rewrite this so that we have it as 2 d2. So we have this as 2 d2 plus 7d plus 3 is equal to 0. And replacing the values of d with m, this will give us 2m squared plus 7m plus 3 is equal to 0. So solving the, you, this using the uh, quadratic formula, we'll have our m is equal to minus 7 plus minus the square root of 7 squared minus 4 times 2 times 3 all this divided by two times two. So that will give us the values of M. In solving this, we'll get the values of M as, so M is equal to, this is minus seven plus minus 49 minus 24, that will be 25. Root of 25 will give us five, minus seven minus five, uh, that will be minus 12 over four. So that will give us, minus three. And then the, the other value of m minus seven plus five, that will be minus two over four, so that will be minus a half. So clearly these roots are real and different. And recall, how do we write real and different roots? So the complementary function will be given by u is equal to, so u is equal to for real and different roots, we have um, a, exponential minus 3x plus b exponential minus a half x as our solution. Now, to get the pi, we've said we are, are using an assumed pi from the table. So look at our f of x. Our f of x is x. Our f of x is equal to x, which is basically a polynomial of degree one. So our f of x is x. So what will be the assumed pi, which is v or we can call it yp, what will be the assumed pi from the table? So if we come to the table here for a polynomial of degree one, look at how the polynomials are replaced. So polynomial of degree two is what we've been given there. It's a plus bx plus cx squared. But since this is a polynomial of degree one, 
then the replacement will just be given by a plus b x okay up to the power here which is degree one now if this is the case then what is our dy dx because we need to replace the values in the formula dy dx differentiating this this is zero differentiating this we get b then the two y dx squared differentiating this we get zero so we will replace these values into the initial formula so that we are able to solve for a and b now our original equation was our original equation is here the 2y dx squared plus dy dx minus 2y is equal to 4. so let's write it down here the 2y dx squared plus 7dy dx plus 3y is equal to x. I think that's our original equation. Let me just look at it again. Yeah, it's this one. So this is our, our, our equation. So replacing these values in our equations that we're able to solve for the pi, replacing this, this is 0 plus 7 into, this is b plus 3 into, what's our assumed y, p, a plus b, x. And this is equal to what? x. So we are going to re-equate and solve for the coefficients. Now here, this gives us 7b plus 3a plus 3bx is equal to x. Now clearly see this has x, this has x, and these are constants, and there's no constant on this other side. So we will take 7b plus 3a constants on this side is equal to zero because we don't have any constants on this side. And then we will take the ones that have x. So we have 3bx, 3bx on this side is equal to x on this other side. So this x will cancel with this x, divide by x on both sides. Then we'll have 3b is equal to one. So what's the value of b? b is equal to a third. Now, since you already know the value of b, we can replace and get the value of a. So replacing to get the value of a, we will have 7 into a third plus 3a is equal to 0. So this basically gives 7 over 3 on this other end. So we will have 7 over 3 plus 7 over 3 plus 3b is equal to 0. So what's the value of our b? So 3b is equal to 3b is equal to minus 7 over 3. So b will clearly be equal to minus 7 over 9. Now, we already have the value of our v. We say that v, which is our particular integral, is equal to a plus bx. So generally, using the assumed version just helps us to get the coefficient. So our answer here is a, which is a third plus bx, so b is minus seven over nine of x. So what's our general solution y? Our y is given by u plus v, and this is the value of our u, which was our complementary function. We got it to be equal to uh, that. So we'll write it right here. So that will be a exponential three x with minus three x plus b exponential minus a half x plus the value of v, which is plus a third minus seven over nine x. This is the general solution, general solution. But since we've been given the initial conditions, they need us to get the particular solution. So we replace the particular, the, the initial conditions that we are able to get the values of this a and b as well. So now let's come to the conditions. So the question says that, um, okay, uh, so I thought we had initial conditions, but there are no initial, actually the initial conditions are given. I just, when x is equal to zero, y is equal to zero, dy dx is equal to zero. So we are being told that when x is equal to zero, then y is equal to zero and dy dx is equal to zero. So let's replace. The first condition that we are going to replace is when x is zero, y is zero. 
And then when x is zero, dy dx is zero. So let's start with when x is zero, y is zero. Now look at this general solution. We will replace the values here. So when x is zero, y is zero. So we're replacing this y here with zero. So zero is equal to the value of x is zero. So if you put zero here, you will have a. If you put zero here, you will have plus b because exponential zero is one. Plus a third, if you put zero here, you'll have zero. So a plus, if here we get a plus b is equal to minus a third. Let's replace the second condition says that when x is zero, dy dx is zero as well. So we first of all start by getting dy dx. When x is zero, dy dx is equal to zero. So let's start by getting dy dx. So what's our dy dx? We are going to differentiate this general solution here. So differentiating this with respect to x, we will have minus 3a exponential minus 3x minus a half b exponential minus a half x. Differentiating this will get zero. Differentiating this will get minus seven over nine. So dy dx is zero when x is zero. Replacing that we have when this is zero, x is zero. So putting zero here, this will be minus 3a. Putting zero here, this will be a half b minus seven over nine. So this is minus 3a minus a half b is equal to, bring this to the other side, we have seven over nine. So let's call this equation two and call this equation one. We are going to solve them in order to get the value of A and B. Now I can make A the subject of the formula here so that I have A is equal to minus three minus B, then replace its value here. So that will give us minus three into the value of A is minus a third minus B minus a half B is equal to seven over nine. So Opening the bracket, we have minus minus will give us positive three and we'll cancel three. So that will be one minus minus will be positive three B minus a half B will be equal to seven over nine. So this is three B minus a half. So that will uh, generally just give us five over two B is equal to, this is seven over nine, seven over nine minus one, seven over nine minus one. So we will have five over two B, our five over two B will be equal to seven over nine minus one is just the same as minus two over nine. So that our B is equal to minus two over nine times two over five. And this gives us minus four over 45 as our value of B. And what's the value of A? Our A, we made A the subject of the formula and we said A is equal to minus a third minus B. So since A is equal to minus a third minus B, so this is minus a third minus minus four over 45, okay. So evaluating that we get, okay. So evaluating, we get that our value of A is this. So now we write the particular solution. Particular solution basically implies the general solution, but now with the values of the uh, unknown constant replaced. And uh, this is also called the undetermined coefficient method of solving the second order differential equation. So where is our general solution? So our general solution, our general solution is this right here. So our final answer will be us replacing the values of A and B. So coming to write it over here, so we'll have our y being equal, our y being equal to a, and our a is minus 11 over 45 exponential minus 3x plus b. Our b is minus 4 over 45 exponential minus a half x. Then the other side of v, which contains the particular, so that is plus a third minus 7 over 9x plus a third minus seven over nine X. And this is the particular solution.